Hi everyone! Welcome to National Taiwan University Office of International Affairs, NTU OIA. And thank you for joining us today in our 2021 online info session for international students. I'm Natalie, a representative of OIA and also an international, an international NTU alumnus. And today, I'll be telling you a little bit about NTU. Before we start, let's take a look at today's agenda. First, why NTU? Here, we'll be introducing National Taiwan University. Next, on how to apply, we'll be walking you through the different application methods and application schedule. Then, for student perspectives, we've invited our fellow NTU students to share their experiences at NTU with us. And last but not least, our Q&A session, where we'll be answering any questions you may have towards NTU, be it admission requirements, application details, or student life. So feel free to comment any questions you might have in the comment section anytime throughout our webinar, and we will address them at the end of the session. Without further ado, let's get going. First off, a little bit about where we are on the map. Taiwan is located off the southeast coast of the Asian continent at the western edge of the Pacific Ocean. Surrounded by the sea and, about, and with the backbone of central mountains, Taiwan is an ideal place for you to embrace Mother Nature. NTU has a few campuses situated in different parts of Taiwan. Our main campus is at Taipei, which is Taiwan's largest city as well as its economic and cultural center. Though most of our students will mainly be at our Taipei campus, it's interesting to note that NTU's campuses add up to a total of 1% of, of, of Taiwan's entire area. Now you know where we are. Next, NTU in numbers. National Taiwan University is among the top 100 universities in the world. We rank 66 in the QS World Rankings and 97 in the THE World Rankings. We have an international college, three professional schools, and 11 colleges. Among these, we have 56 departments, 134 graduate institutes, and more than 100 research centers, including university level, national level, and international research centers. Our 11 colleges include liberal arts, law, management, and social sciences, and also STEM colleges including College of Science, Engineering, and Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. And on the right, we have biomedical colleges, including bioresources and agriculture, life science, medicine, and public health. We will be introducing each college in our webinar tomorrow. So check out our website to find out more about tomorrow's schedule. Among the five fields of the QS World Rankings by subject, NTU is top 100 in all of them, so no matter what your interest, being, be it computer science, engineering, life sciences, management, or liberal arts, NTU is an ideal choice for you to further your studies. NTU has a one-to-one -one undergraduate to graduate ratio, totaling to about 33,000 students. Among these students, 5,000 come from different corners of the world with the most coming from Malaysia, mainland China, Indonesia, Hong Kong, Macau, Japan, and the United States. Not only do we have students from all around the world, NTU also has partner institutes from each continent. We have a total of 644 partner institutes worldwide, 683 exchange programs, and also 118 dual degree programs. Through our exchange program, NTU students get to further explore the world, and students from any corner of the world can experience NTU through our short-term programs. For students of universities that are not partner institutes with us, you are welcome to NTU through our visiting or visiting research programs. As an international university, 7% of our faculty are for 28 different nationalities all over the world. Every semester, we also have more than 1,300 courses conducted in English, so language barriers aren't too big of a problem. There are also programs that are conducted entirely in English, which includes the fields as listed on the right. 
There's no minimum Chinese proficiency level required for these English top programs. And you can complete these programs even if you don't understand Chinese. NTU is also well known for our distinguished alumni. Listed here, we have Dr. Mark Liu, the chairman of TSMC, the world's largest dedicated semiconductor foundry. We have Mrs. Jenny Chen, the co-founder of Trend Micro, which is Taiwan's top best global brand this year. Mr. Johnny Shi is the founder and chairman of Asus, a computer company that is also one of Taiwan's top global brands. Finally, Dr. Chan Ling Tian and Dr. Henry Yang are chancellors of Berkeley and University of California, Santa Barbara, respectively. Now, let's take a little pictorial tour around NTU, starting with our main entrance. The main entrance holds great historical value and has been established since the founding of NTU in 1928. Entering our main entrance, we will have arrived at our Royal Palm Boulevard. Students pass through this boulevard every day to get to class, and it is one of the hottest spots for Instagram-worthy graduation photos. At the end of the Royal Palm Boulevard is our main library, which is also Taiwan's largest university library. It houses more than 4 million books and 4 million journals. Students often spend their time here studying and even preparing for classes. There's also a multimedia center where students can view or check out films, music CDs, and more. Besides the main library, many colleges have their own respective libraries. The Ku Chen Fu Memorial Library is one of them and is also a common spot for studying. Our gymnasium is full of indoor sports facilities including a gym, badminton and squash courts, an indoor swimming pool, dance studios, and more. Outdoor facilities include tennis and basketball courts, running tracks, a baseball field, and an outdoor swimming pool. Other notable facilities include our healthcare center, where students can make appointments for medical consultations. Our student counseling center also provides students support and guidance, ensuring that our students are provided the mental care they need. We also have a career center, which offers helpful resources such as career aptitude assessments and consultation, and also workshops on resume writing or even interview skills. This is our drunken moon lake, which is home to several swans, ducks, and other wildlife. Beside the lake is an outdoor cafe a popular spot to spend time between classes. The azalea is another representative element of NTUs. Every March, azaleas bloom all around NTU, adding a beautiful dash of magenta and pink to the campus. International students and overseas Chinese students are prioritized for on-campus accommodation. At the Prince Houses, you can choose to live by yourself in a single room or have a roommate in a twin room. These cost about 170 to 260 US dollars per month. General dorms, on the other hand, are twin or quad rooms, ranging from 260 to 430 USD per semester. NTU also offers many services to ensure that your stay here is comfortable. We have orientation activities, especially for freshmen. We also have free Chinese courses to help you overcome language barriers. Our student volunteer services are where each individual international student is paired with a Taiwanese student volunteer. Your volunteer will show you around the university, give you tips regarding university life, and is probably the fastest way to find a new best buddy. We also have a 24-7 emergency number, should you have any emergencies or even inquiries. At NTU, we have more than 400 student clubs. We have a lot of overseas student associations where students from similar cultural backgrounds gather and form a second home. There are countries like Malaysia, Japan, Latin America and Caribbean states and more. There's even a general overseas Chinese students association. But even if you don't fit into any of these, there are still a myriad of clubs 
available. Physical training clubs include martial arts, yoga, and even frisbee. Service clubs mostly volunteer and give back to society. We also have choirs, acapella, acapella groups, traditional Chinese orchestras, opera, dance troupes, and more, all of which are categorized under entertainment or art. Our academic clubs study all sorts of things, ranging from traditional medicine to feminism and even design thinking. With so many choices to choose from, it's no wonder that club activities are such an important part of the NTU experience. Moving on, let's talk about the application schedule and procedures. Before starting any application procedures, you should first find out your student status. So are you an international student? or perhaps an overseas Chinese student. If you don't already own, you can find out at our OIA website. International students should apply through individual applications through OIA. For overseas Chinese students and Hong Kong and Macau students, recommendation by overseas high school and United Distribution is only available for bachelors. You can also apply through individual application through UEC LCS that is the University Entrance Committee for Overseas Chinese Students. For mainland Chinese students, apply through UEC MCS, the University Entrance Committee for mainland Chinese students. Admissions are now open for application. First round, applicant, first round applications are open from August to December each year. Though this has already ended, students can, also, can still apply right now through the second round of applications, which are open from January to February. So be sure to submit your application before 25th February and wait for the results to be announced on 16th April. And I'll be briefly explaining the procedures in my next slide. The application period for recommendation by overseas high schools has already ended, but is open for application each August to October. Next, a walkthrough of our individual application procedures. First, you will need to register an account for our online application system, which can be found on the OIA website. After that, step two, log in and fill out your online application form. Step three, you will need to list your references. Note that you may or may not be required to fill in this information depending on each college's requirements. Then step four, up upload all your required documents. And finally, confirm your documents and submit your application. And then we patiently wait for results to be announced on 16th April. Since the recommendation by high school's application period is already over, I'll just briefly explain this. It's important to note that students must be recommended by their high school principal or teacher, and that individual applications are not accepted for this application method. More information on this can be found on our website. Tuition fees vary according to degree and college. The approximate amount for international students and mainland Chinese students is 1,600 to 2,600 USD per cent. Whereas for overseas Chinese students and Hong Kong and Macau students, it's approximately 800 to 1,300 USD per cent. Credit fees, administrative fees, and miscellaneous fees are all included in these amounts. Taiwan offers lots of scholarships for international and overseas Chinese students. Here, I'll only be introducing the NTU scholarship. This is the NTU Entrance Scholarship. All students that are awarded this scholarship will receive full tuition waiver. Bachelor students are eligible for a monthly stipend of up to 333 USD for a maximum of four years. Master students will receive a monthly stipend of at least 200 USD for up to two years. And PhD students, a monthly stipend of at least 265 USD for up to three years. It is important to note that for overseas Chinese students and Hong Kong and Macau students, you are only eligible for this scholarship if you apply through recommendation of overseas, high, of overseas high schools. Of course, this isn't the only scholarship available. 
There are many other scholarships from government organizations, other associations, or even your respective colleges. You can scan the QR codes on the right for more information. They will take you to our, to our scholarship web pages. And thus concludes our introduction to NTU. You can visit our website for more information at oia.ntu.edu.tw. And should you have any admission inquiries, you can contact our admissions team at intadmission, that's intadmission at ntu.edu.tw. Also, you are all very welcome to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for regular updates. That's it for that. And today we have invited some very special guests to join us today in our student sharing session. This is Matthias, who is from Chicago and is currently a master's student in uh, Chinese literature. Hi Matthias, thank you for joining us today. And this is Evelyn, who is from Indonesia. Hi. Evelyn is now a third year student in business administration. Fourth year. I'm so sorry. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> I also forget that. <laughs> uh, Wade, Wade yeah. is the uh, third third year yeah, student so. in the in a uh, in bioenvironmental systems engineering. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank and you. first, we'll have Evelyn share her stories with us. Okay. Okay. So again, hi everyone. My name is Evelyn. I'm from Indonesia. Sumatra Island, Biok Province, if anyone is from there, hi. So today I'll be sharing um, my experience in NTU. If I go back three years to three years ago, I would still choose NTU and hopefully you will understand why roughly 10 minutes later. And before I start anything, I just want to say that I'm not being told to say anything. I'm not being forced to say anything. Everything is my own opinion, so you can believe me. <laughs> so yeah, let's start. So our agenda for today will be, first of all, how and why I chose NTU. Then I'll explain the things that I love about NTU. And then last, I'll make some final comments. First, how and why I chose NTU. There are actually some um, the process of how I chose my university. So initially, I thought that I wanted to be in a Western environment. And you might be thinking, and when you're in Taiwan, it's not a Western environment. but um. After searching for the prices and the tuition, I just thought that it's too expensive. And I just think, um, yeah, I can just offer other options that are also international schools. So, yeah. Um, lastly, I chose Taiwan as my destination. And after hearing from my family and my friends that also come, came to Taiwan for university, they all say that Taiwan is a very safe place and the living costs are just really not very high compared to the quality of life that you get here, honestly. And I agree. Next, um, I chose NTU and why is that? There are two main reasons. So the first one is very reasonable tuition, despite being the best in Taiwan. As Natalie has said, um, it's the first in Taiwan and 66th worldwide in QS rankings. And being the best means that you get more um, support and resources from the government. And for us students, it means better quality of university. So that's good. Second reason is there are lots of international students in NTU. It's just really easy to just meet um, other people from different countries. So yeah. Um, second are the things that I love about NTU. So there are three parts that I want to explain. We'll start slowly. I'll start from the first one, academic resources. Um, NTU's academic resources are no joke, and I tell you, like, no joke. Um, I'll explain one by one. So this one, the scholarship that Natalie mentioned earlier, I got one. It's called the Financial Assistance Grant for International Students. It was a um, full waiver, and I got a monthly stipend of 6000 and that's really good. <laughs> so yeah, they have a lot of other scholarships just for international students. Do check out um, NTUIA website to just know more about the full list and the full, you know, quotas and the information and stuff. And then free Chinese classes only for international students. Natalie also mentioned this one. So this might sound really trivial to all of us, but 
I attended this class and my Chinese went like really, really, like, yeah, really well. So basically they divide you based on your Chinese level. So you won't feel like left out or something. And then let me tell you how bad my Chinese was when I, before I came to Taiwan. So I went to a McDonald's in Singapore and a person who didn't speak English came to me and asked, um, asked me in Chinese, do they have this like ice cream and strawberry flavor? And I didn't understand what she was saying. And I realized that I didn't know the Chinese word for strawberry when that was my transfer flight for my first semester in Taiwan. So yeah, that's how my Chinese, uh, how, how bad my Chinese was. And this class really helped me survive um, at least a few, few um, first few years in Taiwan. Next, NTU has really um, a lot of classes with unique projects. So this one, take this one for example. I took a class called Introduction to Management Information System. In this class, the project was we had to utilize management information system to improve ESUN Bank's waiting system. So ESUN Bank is one of Taiwan's best, uh, one of Taiwan's best private bank. So the fact that we can meet and discuss our ideas directly with the bank manager, not the one I circled, is just really great that we have access to these things. Also, um, this is the class that I took also, it's called Digital Marketing. So the professor knew a few alumni from NTU who has now worked in Google and he got us some really cool resources. So we got four free lectures on Google AdWords because we had to find an, a company and then help them increase basically website traffic through Google AdWords. So we got free lectures and then the professor gave us, gave each team 4,000 NTD or around 150 US dollar for experiment, like to experiment with Google AdWords. I think that's just really cool. And we get to visit Google ourselves. I just think that the teachers here know some really good, uh, great connections and it gives us great opportunities. Also, NTU has really good reputation. So it collaborates with a lot of big enterprises for various programs. The one I, that I joined was called NTU Talent Cultivating Program. So the one that I was enrolled in was for Global Marketing Training Forum. So this was, uh, that photo is in Ford um, office in Taipei, in Taiwan. So we were doing our final presentation, but it's unfortunate that we don't have a proper photo of us presenting. But the fact that we get lectures from the marketing directors themselves from Ford is just really amazing. Again, that we have access to these things. So yeah, next is opportunities for foreign students. Okay, first of all, I want to say that international students can work in Taiwan. The rules are 20 hours per week during the semester and 40 hours per week during the winter or summer break. I just think that it's really great that foreign students can work because most of the time we can't, we couldn't, we can't. So yeah, for example, I was a teaching assistant and international students can also be a teaching assistant in Taiwan. So this was me. Um, I was the TA for a class called Written and Oral Communication English for Professional Pursuit. So, it is a, an English class, but it is taught in Chinese. Even though it's taught in Chinese, they still appointed me as a TA, a, an international student, which means that they give foreign students a chance also. Also, um, NTO OIA really just takes care of us. They sent recruitment emails, volunteering consultation programs, everything th through our email directly. So you will get any information directly like if you just open your phone and you get all information from the OIA. Also, these are only a little bit of the activities and events that I joined that I get to experience thanks to NTU's email. Thanks to NTU that sent me those information. So in the upper left corner, you can see um, me, uh, a lot of people wearing red shirts. So 
That's a program called NTU Students Ambassador. Basically, we represent NTU to welcome guests from all around the world, for, such as um, university deans or visiting professors and stuff. Also, I do a lot of MC, like cultural events, festivals, also orientation events, orientation for international students. Also, the bottom right side, you can see me doing a campus tour. That was, um, I was a student advisor for NTU summer program. I learned a lot of stuff and met a lot of friends from different parts of the world. And yeah, that was just a few of the events. Um, if you want to know more, you can contact me later. And the third part is just the environment of NTU. I love it so much. NTU cares a lot for international students. Again, through emails, they send us a lot of, you know, things about mental health. So like mental, mental care forum or like seminars and then volunteering activities to keep us, you know, sane, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And then food wise, you will not starve. Um, I can promise you all of these food are accessible within five minutes walk from my dorms. Taiwanese, um, Japanese, Korean, Thai, Vietnam, Malaysian, if anything within five minutes walk. This is the desserts. Um, there's a lot of bakery, brownies, ice shops. These are my favorites, um, cafes. Yeah, also within five minutes walk. So it's very cool that we have food, all this food just within um, five minutes walk. So yeah, it's really cool. Also, these are the campus. When I'm just feeling down, I will just mm, video call my family and just take a walk around the school. Especially when the weather is nice, it just makes me feel better. Yeah, these are the campus, um, the photos that I took. Also, the campus really cares about our health and basically it's very convenient. So. Just as Natalie has said, we have a lot of class, sport classes, for example, golf, yoga, squash, tennis, contemporary dance, everything is class and you can get credits from them and it's for free. Also, NTU is very near a lot of U-bike, MRT, bus stops. It's very, very convenient. Also, inside the campus, we have post office, Jinxing Fa, Jinxing Fa is kind of like Target or Walmart, where you can buy daily necessities. Also, we have convenience stores open for 24 hours, authorized Apple store, counseling center, clinic, all within inside the campus. And also, you get a lot of student discounts. Last but not least, Facebook page. So NTU has this Facebook page called Jiao Liu Fun. So when you lose things or you want, when you want to buy second hand stuff or sell one, you can just go to the Facebook page and post something. Um, for my story, I lost my phone and my student ID, <laughs> and I got them all back through this Facebook page. So I can say that the community is really great. And yeah. So final comments. I just want to say that I really love NTU, and again, no one is telling me to say anything. I learned a lot from this school, and... I really recommend you guys to consider NTU as one of your destinations. Yeah, it's a really good place. It's really fun, I promise. You can come meet me if you come here. So yeah, that's all for me. NTU the best. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn, for sharing with us. I'm actually a Malaysian, so we're like yeah, yeah, neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Very, very neighbor. Hi, neighbor. yeah, and I totally get how... Uh, the tuition here is yeah. really relatively affordable. Yeah. But even with such for affordable tuition, NTU still provides a really pioneering environment and resources. True, true, true. Uh, next, we have Matthias. Could you please share with us your NTU experience? Yeah, can they uh, set the time for? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so my name is Matthias. I grew up around the U.S., born in Sweden, mostly from Philadelphia and Chicago. Uh, I'm in my third year here at NTU in the Department of, or the Graduate Institute of Chinese Literature. Um, a 
apologize, I did not make a PPT today. I was up till late last night handing in a paper. So uh, yes, NTU is quite difficult. You will definitely be <laughs> burning the midnight oil, but it's rewarding at the same time. So I dragged myself out of bed to come here and talk to you all. Uh, I basically would echo most of the things Evelyn just said. I have a very positive uh, uh, outlook on my time here at NTU and a lot of the things that she just brought up, I totally agree with. And uh, I can say that I, no one's paying me either. I, I wish yeah, if they want to give me some money to make me say nice things, I'm not opposed to it, but I will do it for free. Uh, so I'll just run down a list and uh, hopefully repeat some of the things you've already heard, but add some slightly different perspectives. So uh, as a graduate student here, we do a lot of pretty much self-guided independent research in, in addition to a fairly heavy course load. Uh, and one of the exciting things about being in the Department of Chinese Literature has just been it's being surrounded by really uh, excellent classmates. Um, this being uh, the only country that still uses traditional Chinese characters and has uh, quite a, a strong education in uh, classical literature for its students means that a lot of people I interact with are, are truly uh, extremely well read, extremely erudite. And just being able to share my time in the classroom, as well as the, uh, we have a a, a research office that we share as graduate students, and being able to interact with my Taiwanese uh, classmates who are in the majority, and then other students from around the world who all really are, are, are very dedicated scholars, has given me tons of opportunities to ask questions and uh, just get inspiration from my classmates. So I'm, I'm really grateful that I put myself in this environment and I've benefited from it a lot. Uh, the library, as you already heard, has, what, four million books? I, I don't know, well, I never yeah, counted them. There's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. So practically what that means is, first of all, there, there are books in many different languages. Most of the books that I've wanted to find in English to supplement my research, I've been able to find in NTU. And even if I haven't been able to find them, uh, in our library, I can get them through interlibrary loan from other libraries in Taiwan. So basically, I've never had an, a situation where I couldn't get a book that I needed. Uh, and without a doubt, when it comes to Chinese resources as well, pretty much everything I've ever wanted is here. I can often go to the special collections here or in partner universities and find ancient documents, you know, even well over 100 years old and look at the original if I want to, uh, which is which is really useful if you're conducting this kind of research. Uh, there's opportunities for graduate students here to submit articles to Taiwanese journals, which have extremely high standards. And going through that process has uh, definitely honed my research ability. It challenged me in a lot of really useful ways. Uh, I just last week got my first article accepted to Zhongguo Wenxie Yanzhou, which is this university's own uh, Journal open to master's students. It's probably the highest ranked journal in the in the country that master's students can submit to uh, in this field. Uh, and even though it's run by NTU, in fact, all the uh, review process is totally anonymous and double blind. So I went through four stages of review, got a lot of uh, feedback that was really excellent, had the opportunity to present my paper. And how to put it, you definitely will also be pulling some late nighters to do that. But at the same time, you're really running yourself through a gauntlet. You're coming out at the other end, uh, you tempered yourself because you're exposing yourself to really rigorous uh, critique. So that's been a great opportunity. Um, I mentioned we can take advantage of partner universities libraries. We can also take classes at other universities in Taiwan and get credits in, in NTU, especially I've taken classes uh, that to supplement my own research interests at National Taiwan Normal University, which is very close by and also has excellent professors. Um, I've been on scholarship here in addition to the NTU's own scholarships that come through the OIA uh, application process. I came in for my first two years on a, on a Taiwanese government scholarship, which I was able to apply here in, in NTU. So that was great. Um, I've gotten great Work opportunities as well, just by being here on the NTU campus. I'm currently working for the National Palace Museum as well as another museum in Taiwan and a, a the, the, the Taipei Chinese Pen, which is associated with the International Pen uh, 
organization dedicated to free speech and literature. All of those opportunities came just through my campus network. I honestly wasn't even looking for those jobs and just by being here and getting to know people. Although I was already working as a translator, uh, I got these really excellent opportunities. So I've been making enough money to support myself as well as, I mean, with museums basically being paid to learn. I'm not doing oral translation, I'm translating some of their books, uh, written materials for exhibits. So it's, it's really meshed well with my, with my studies. Um, and we all need money because OIA is not paying us to say these things. <laughs> so <laughs> we gotta find it some other way. Uh, the, I've, I've encountered a lot of really good professors in my department and outside of my department. I've taken classes in philosophy as well. Uh, some, some of the professors have been very willing to go out of their way to give personal guidance, both uh, written correspondence and also just being open to me one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and generally speaking, that has also uh, just deepened my experience here and given me a lot of opportunities to uh, interact directly with some of the leaders in the fields of uh, Chinese literature, Chinese history, philosophy, and so on, who I would really otherwise have no opportunity to, to spend so much time with one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. So that's been great. Um, I have experience in higher education in China, and I want to bring that up because I'm fluent in Chinese. I spent nearly 10 years in China. Uh, I worked at and did research at and studied at a number of universities in China. Uh, and I also went to University of Chicago in the U.S. in my undergrad, and I would say comparing NTU to my China experience and my U.S. experience, I'll very favorably say that NTU reminds me a lot of University of Chicago uh, in terms of the rigor, the quality of the education, the small class size, the focus on independent research, original research. Uh, and, and especially just the fact is that this is the only country where you can conduct research in Chinese with real academic freedom real freedom of speech. If you go to other places, you may not have that opportunity. And this is significant because having academic freedom, uh, if you don't have that, what you can say, what you can think about, what you can write about, what you can publish will be limited and curtailed. So that's a really fantastic thing that we have here in Taiwan. Um, and uh, I, I really want to highlight that for everybody because if you come here, you will, you will have a degree, you'll feel like the, really, the world is open to you in terms of what you can do as a scholar uh, and, and potentially as a future academic or a leader in whatever field you're going into. Uh, that to me has been something I'm really grateful for. Um, the campus, the neighborhood are all really nice. Uh, like Evelyn said, if you want to eat anything, you're going to be able to find it. Um, just wandering around Taipei is very pleasant. Uh, and especially to me, uh, that's something I really like is that we have access to nature. Uh, it's very easy to hop on a train maybe for one hour and you end up in, in literally a jungle or by a beach or on a mountain. Hiking trails are often directly accessible, you know, five minute walk from the train station. So you get up in the morning, take a train for an hour with your friends, go hike, you know, go see a waterfall literally, uh, eight hours, nine hours, ten hours, come back, get on the train, and then you're back in Taipei and with your friends, you know, you go get a great dinner. Uh, maybe even catch a movie and then you're back in your bed at midnight and you know it's like how, how many places in the world can you do that and definitely if I'm in Chicago and I want to go find a mountain I gotta go drive a car for 20 hours so <laughs> seriously so that, this is one of the really lovely things about Taipei, Taiwan um, and you don't even have to leave the city of Taipei to hike there's hiking trails that you can just get to on the subway it's, it's, it's really incredible uh, the OIA has always been very helpful um, except they don't give me enough money. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, yeah, and just I, I really want to point out too, uh, Taiwan has a government that believes in science. So what does that mean? That means that they didn't mess up like uh, Donald Trump did, and we're not wearing masks. Uh, I mean, this is significant. We weathered the COVID storm, and that really boils down a lot to the, the, the civic participation in the society and a certain type of governance that has protected our health. So I'm grateful to be here. That's 10 minutes. <laughs> Give me my money. Thank you, Matthias. Now, I would like to say that I, I feel kind of sorry for you guys because I am being paid to say this. <laughs> but I would like to say that 
our love for NCU is definitely true with or without the money. <laughs> uh, moving on, Wei, could you tell us about your NCU experience? All right. So, yeah, it's there. All right, so I'll just follow the trend and say I am not being paid to do this. So <laughs> if I say nice things, it's coming from the heart. Yeah, so, um, sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm about to share with you guys my NTU journey. And, um, well, there's an ox there, not because ox is my favorite animal, but because uh, this year is going to be the year of the ox here in Taiwan following um, the Chinese zodiac. So yeah, this is a bit about me. So like Natalie said, my name is Anwar. I was, I put born and raised in Belize, but actually I was born in Nicaragua, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot where I was born. Um, <laughs> so I was born in Nicaragua, raised in Belize, and yeah, I just liked environmental studies. So that's why I applied for the bioenvironmental systems engineer major in NTU. So after starting NTU, I started this major. Um, I became a research assistant here because well, it's kind of mandatory in my department to become a research assistant. I became a student ambassador, and I'm also a volunteer for a couple of places. Um, these are just a couple of stuff that happened to me just by being in NTU. And well, as I, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I think that I'm, I, well, I'm sure that after graduating, there's a lot of to come from just being in this university. Again, not being paid to say this. Um, yeah, so. This is where my con my country's name is Belize. Um, it's kind of like literally halfway across the world, like exactly halfway across the world. It's kind of there's a video of it. There's a video of it just to, just for you guys to see how far. So um, the reason I I came to Taiwan is mostly because I got a scholarship to study here that I applied to from Belize. But um, yeah, I chose NTU because it's just an amazing school and. It's so far, right now you guys are gonna see the reasons why I came halfway across the world and I still chose NTU. Mm. Yeah, well, that's just a little video for you guys to literally see how far I had to come, guys. It's 36 to 48 hours if by, oh by plane. It's not something I want to put any of you guys through, but <laughs> it's definitely worth it to all my people in Central America and South America. Definitely come to NTU. <laughs> yeah, so that's Belize. All right, so right now I'm gonna show you guys a bit of why I chose NTU. Right now. Oh, can I turn, oh yeah, can I? yeah. Why, why I came to NTU. So um, there's three things that I have to highlight when I started NTU. The first one is there's what I thought, what I got, and where I am now. So what I thought is I came to grow and succeed after starting my engineering degree, I realized it's going to be harder than I thought, like really hard. Uh, I thought I wouldn't succeed, but uh, now I'm in my third year, going my fourth year, I don't have much classes left. And actually being here in NTU, I got to grow a lot more than I thought. Like I came here for an awesome experience, but I have to admit, I got a very amazing experience despite all the hardships. Um, and these are the three things that I look out for when I applied to NTU. As I said, um, the first one is definitely the department. Like the minute I saw the name, well, first I saw the name and I was like, oh, this sounds like something I like. Then I checked out the page and I was like, okay, this is, this is what I'm looking for. Uh, to the resources, NTU has a lot, a lot, a lot. Let me highlight a lot of resources. And lastly, the environment. Like the campus is just like really nice. So my department, um, yeah, well, like I said, I just looked up the name and I saw something I liked. And then I saw the goal and what they were trying to do. And it kind of stood out from the rest of places that they were actually trying to give you, first of all, the way they were trying to train you to do research um, as an environmental engineer. And secondly, mostly the international perspective that I think they were trying to give you. Because despite being in Taiwan, you would, as some of the other people who shared said, uh, you get a very international experience here in NTU. And here's just for you guys to see what just my department has in research areas for you guys to up. Like if you guys are interested in my department, you know, but you, there's more departments. Um, and well, now I get to the bad part, the, my classes are my burden. This is just a couple of stuff that I had to do. And let me tell you, it's stuff that I didn't expect. I went from like calculations to working with machines to like, 
growing a plant for a class, which growing a plant is very stressful, guys, just so you guys know. And oh, and also um and also just reading in Chinese. Yeah. Reading stuff in Chinese just took a lot of time. Um, these are just a couple of memes that I thought I should share with you guys that kind of sum up my experience. Every time my mom calls me and tells me like, so how's your degree going? You're probably doing this and this while I'm really just reading books. Um, yeah, like when you get back your grade and then you're like, oh my gosh, I did so bad. But then you see the class average and you're like, I did pretty okay. <laughs> and lastly, me thinking about what I'm going to do in the future, to me actually studying for what I have to study. I'm just, I'm that little girl right on the bottom corner. That's the girl in me. <laughs> um, yeah, but again, that was just, that was the bad part that I sort of survived, which you will have a great experience here, but you have to remember that you also came to study. So it's normal that you're going to have those pressures, especially from the top school in Taiwan. Um, but I had a silver lining. My classmates and my friends I made here, I've had some great experiences with them. This is just some pictures of us for the um, Shengong Jia, which is like the night for your department. Yeah, it was super fun. I'll do it again every year. Um, and there were good times. Like, for example, me volunteering, volunteering, I got some certificates. Just being in class and learning from my professors, picking up skills like mapping. And I actually enjoyed growing the plant, although it was very stressful. So I put the plant there on the right for you guys to see. And resources. Um, we're not being paid to say this, and I'll just let you guys know. NTU has a lot of resources, from scholarships to the connections you can make, like some of the other guys shared. And um, yeah, like stipends that they have. For example, well, for me in my case, I already had the scholarship when I came here, but I keep getting emails of scholarships that NTU has. And if it wasn't for the one I had now, I'd probably apply to one too. Like it's so many. You guys just need to look it up and check. But I'll talk a bit about like what I've done here. Again, I want to highlight this is just what I've done. Um, everyone will have a different experience when they come to NTU, but these are just a couple of stuff that maybe you will also come in contact with with your experience here. First, like I went on a research trip to India um, for a month with the IPCS department, which is just the climate change department here. Two, I joined the student ambassadors, which was like still one of my favorite things to do. Um, volunteer for the International Companions for Change, super fun volunteer work, and last time on the track and field team. Yeah. So the first one is the India trip. Um, so I was in a class. I actually went on this trip because of an elective. I will, I will, the TAs offered me the chance to go with them to India for a month and did some research on sustainability, like the SDGs, if you guys know the sustainability goals. Stayed so there a month, lived with locals, did our research and had a great experience. It was a research trip, but we still managed to meet a lot of people and travel a bit. Yeah, so it was super fun. And I learned a lot again. Uh, now the student ambassadors, if you guys ever become an NTU student, it's open to you guys. It's kind of, it's a job for part of OIA and it kind of includes you receiving guests, um, assisting OIA with plan meetings. And also it's a great opportunity for you to meet people. Like I'll highlight that the extracurricular activities are great for you to meet people. Um, and ICF, which is a must too. Uh, I definitely recommend ICL for an international student. You get paired to a school and you Skype with them and get actually to visit the school. So you get a chance to travel around Taiwan. 100% uh, recommend. Please do it. Do not wait until your third year like me to do it. Start from your first semester. And the bridges you form at NTU. So I'm a volunteer for the NGO um, Taiwan Youth Co Climate Coalition, which are like kind of the climate ambassadors for Taiwan. And it's one of the oldest youth-based NGOs. And because of them also, I met Domi, uh, which is Latin for home, which they just work with um, improving, improving impoverished place, places. Yeah, so I work with them sometimes. And I my internship, at a project which is also actually under NTU, um, Moscase. And they're the global, global affairs and science engagement um, for the Ministry of Science and Technology. Uh, nice experience and I met some great people. Uh, and yeah, some partnerships with um, well, some partnerships through friendship. For example, I found I helped found an association of Latino and Caribbean people in Taiwan um, in NTU. 
And if you guys, if there's any Latinos or Caribbean people out there, you're welcome to join us. And two, I'm doing currently doing a podcast with a friend. So a lot of experiences you can have. And lastly, the environment. Um, NTU is convenient, beautiful, very big and natural, and good food. Like I have to highlight good food because Gongguan is like right there in front. It's our night market. Like you just have to cross the street and get really good food. And uh, yeah. It's beautiful and really natural. Like these are my favorite spots in NTU, and you'll definitely see them. The main road, um, so, um, Drunken Moon Lake. Sorry, I confuse it with Sun Moon Lake sometimes. The names are too similar. <laughs> <laughs> Completely different, but I don't know why I confuse them. And lastly, our National Library. So that's just a video of it. Yeah, of what me going home one day. But yeah, I just, the last thing I want to sum up is just that this is my journey. This was my NTU journey. I, yes, I call it the journey. I want to be cheesy like that. Um, <laughs> but I don't know what your, yours will be, but I'm sure it's going to be great. And we all look forward to seeing you guys here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Wade, for sharing with us. I really want to say that I do think NTU is really a place where you can find yourself. It's a place where bridges are built and connections are made. And there are so many amazing opportunities and you can make lifelong friends along the way. And that's it for our student session, for our student sharing session. Next is our Q&A session. Before we start, I would, like to, I would like to invite Andrew, our head of Global Students Division to join us today. Hi, Andrew. Hello. Thank you, Andrew, for joining us today. And uh, Andrew will be answering any questions you have regarding admissions. Yes. Andrew, would you like to do us uh, the uh, honor of choosing the question? Yes, yes, choose, I think, I think uh, how about we just uh, go uh, just from, just from the very beginning? So, okay, this is the first one. So, this is not really about admission, but I think more about, more about campus life. So, is the gym available for all the students to use at any time? I think our gym is open starting from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so, unless you want to work like midnight, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise you can run around the school campus. At oh, yes, yeah, so of course. Yeah. Nice. And I want to add something. The, um, the fees are really cheap. You can swim indoors for only 200 NTD per month. Yes. That's, that's really that's crazy. Lovely. And gym, too. It's 200 NTD. Yes. Really cheap. There are a lot of student discounts. Yeah. Mm, yes. And this uh, Becca, it says, how do I apply for the full waiver tuition? Full waiver scholarship. So, in terms of how to do that, it's very easy. Just in, in our application system, we will, there, there will be a check box asking if you want to uh, apply for a scarf and you click on yes, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the, only, the only thing you need to do. Um, if you are an undergraduate student, basically, uh, our the professors will just evaluate all of your application uh, documents, including your signal purpose and of all your academic records and, other, and stuff like that. If you are a graduate student, we will highly recommend you to contact your uh, potential supervisor at the very uh, first. So maybe you can write an email to them, or you can introduce yourself about and uh, talking about yourself, and then let them know you even before you apply for the for the program, so that you will be uh, have better chance to get accepted, and then they will be more willing to provide structure for you. Um, then. And the same person says that do I need to do I need some kind of permit to be able to work? If yes, how do I apply for that? Uh, yes, you need to you need to have a permit to work. You have to apply for a work permit after you uh, let me enroll here. And I think the application procedure is very easy, just very easy. Right? Yeah. Just, just, I think yeah, it's fine. Just yeah. uh, tell us and then we'll just do it for you. Or something like that. You you could do that and then you it's a website. It's it's a website. website. Yeah, it's a website. Then, I did it myself. But it takes about, uh, about, about yeah. a week for what? Uh, I think it's about two weeks. weeks. It's about right. a week to get a permit, right? Yeah. yeah. So and the work, the work limit, I think it's uh, 20 hours per week. Yeah. I mean, yeah. during the school time. Yeah. And during summer and winter, I think the staff will yeah, it's about 40, 40, hours. 40 hours per week. So that should, that should be fair enough. Um, is there any language requirement for your majors, like HSK or something? Um, if you're applying for a Chinese talk program, you will be required for a A2 level, a CFR A2 level China, uh, Chinese language proficiency. If you're applying for our English top program, that will be a C2 program. C2 is uh, about equals to like TOEFL, probably 70 something. Mm -hmm. I think that's fairly, 
fair. <laughs> can I, can I, I should add, sure. for a Chinese talk program, you need the TOEFL. Uh, yes. So I, my situation, I was accepted with an HSK yes. because I couldn't take the TOEFL where I was overseas. Mm -hmm. But then I was required to take the TOEFL after arriving in Taiwan. So this is important and people uh, should try to figure out where the TOEFL is offered in their own country. Uh, it's less than the HSK, but you can still take it around the world. So when you apply, you can still use HSK to apply. Right. Yeah, right. But uh, after that, uh, even if you have HSK, HSK or TOEFL, uh, after you enroll, you will have will have a Chinese proficiency test for you anyway, if you're an undergraduate. So if you're Chinese, that's just like I mentioned before. So if you're a Chinese uh, proficiency, that maybe you think yourself not good enough to take the courses, even though you are applied, you are accepted. You can still go to our Chinese, uh, free general Chinese courses to improve your Chinese language for at least one year. I think that's, that's what we can offer. Okay, so this is a uh, mock. So if my GPA is not that good, it's only 2.46, can still be able to get into NTU master program and get some scholarships. I'll say, in theory, yes. Uh, of course, we know that if your GPA is uh, as high as possible, that will be, be better for you to get into any university, uh, especially for master program. But uh, when we, when our professors are evaluating our applications, now it's not only about your GPA. It's also about why you want to apply for NTU and why you want to apply for this program, and uh, most importantly, why you want to apply to this partner, this professor. So maybe there's a, a very highly uh, connected research question that you want to research for, and then that's the exact the professor are need are need. So again, uh, we will. We will I would recommend you to, uh, well, of course, you, if you can have a higher GPA, that would be better. But if you if you don't, then first uh, try to contact your professor first, and then try to figure out who may be willing to, uh, who is who who, who, is, who is having the similar research field that you are interested in. And the second thing is that uh, pay uh, pay more attention to your statement of purpose. The, our professor was. Evaluate, evaluate our, the whole package, including everything that you provide, not only just your GPA. Um, do we offer any program for international non-Chinese speakers, in particular in the field of business? Yes. Um, in master, we have a global MBA program that is a full English uh, master program for business administration. Um, that's, uh, I think that will be about 60 students every year, and half them, uh, half them are, uh, are Taiwanese and half them are internationals. The program, every every course of that program is uh, conducted in English, and it has been running for about 10 to 15 years and running very success successfully. So uh, we will highly recommend anyone who wants to uh, have some uh, business courses, business degree programs in, in English, uh, we can apply for GMBA. And it will require uh, one to three year working ex working experience. So that's that's another nice thing that you need to uh, be aware of. Okay, maybe I want to add something. Fun. Sure. So NTU actually has a Harvard case um, discussion classroom. It's licensed directly from Harvard. And do you know how much it's co it costs? It costs a th wait a thousand. Okay, ten million NT dollars, or like three hundred and fifty thousand USD, like for the license. They actually license it, the classroom for the discussion, and only uh, MBA students can enter. I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. Information. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this one uh, for Chinese top programs uh, is it the exam language in Chinese well, as well. Uh, it depends. I would say. Oh, you are yeah. from yeah. yeah, I want to that. Sorry. Because I am a mathematics uh, uh, graduate. Yes, I studied mathematics in NTU in my NTU years. And while the mathematics programs are taught in Chinese, the textbooks are, are, I would say almost all of my textbooks were in English and you have to know all the English terms as well as the Chinese terms. And the, the exam, the exams are almost always, I think like 100% of my exams were in English, but it's interesting to know that you can write in Chinese, you can answer them in Chinese if you want to. Yeah. But for me, I preferred English, so I wrote my exams in English. The what? This question. This, this question was meant to be, thank you, Alvin Bong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Natalie, I welcome you to the mathematics department. <laughs>
Okay, so do the professors also use Chinese text for, for Chinese taught courses? I think it depends. It, really yeah, depends, depends. On the it really depends. And but I would say most of our professors, since they are there, they got their com, uh, communal degree from from the state actually. A lot of them got from about, the state. Yeah, about 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 seventy percent. So most of our text, including like like Chinese department or history department, most of our text are, are in English. That's that's what I know. Yes. And yeah. for okay, for business maybe I can add for. If it is in Chinese, it's the translation version of English. So you can just buy the English books. Ah, so it's a hundred percent is English books. Yes, I would say yeah. Unless unless you're in my department. Oh, oh yeah. 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 But if you're in the humanities, you're in history, philosophy, yeah. Chinese literature. There is something that you you're going to be exposed to a lot of books that you don't have an English version. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. What about uh by bio environmental systems engineering? Yeah, most of my classes had English text. English textbooks, and even for the classes that the professor just has PowerPoints, he would put that reference to a textbook you can use for yourself. Yeah. So it's pretty, it's survivable. Trust me. Don't worry. <laughs> and the exam. uh, exams. My professors were nice enough to translate them for me. Oh, yeah, okay. in that sense. oh, so for you and for you only. Nice. And no, no, not only for me. There's another <laughs> student, <laughs> there's student who needs it too. He trans they translate it for you. For just the both of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. They, they're a nice enough to translate it. Okay, uh, we'll skip some uh, similar questions and then go to this one. So, you're excited to know the results of your admission. Uh, wow. The admission will be the result of no, this is about our, on Thursday. So, you'll, okay. you'll, you'll, you'll know very soon. So, and, Good and, luck. Our, and our second admission, second admission is actually uh, will end on the, uh, February 25th, and the result will be well, available. 15, um, 16th of April. Good luck, good luck. Good luck, you guys. We welcome you. Open arms. One of the questions that you just skipped over, I can answer very sure. quickly, just sure. For, for taking classes in NTNU, which is uh, uh, yeah. our normal university, and what's the national Taiwan University? Normal. Normal University. No, 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 That's automatic for my department. If it's oh, those, really? if it's N, if it's NTNU and NTUSC, right? Yeah, NTU. That's just you just in the course selection program. Yes, you can see those courses. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's other cool. other universities you have to apply specifically. Yeah. yeah. So we are we are we are in the call we call assistant with uh, NTNU and NTU, NTUST. Uh, so all of the their courses. Are basically available through our uh, our course at the system, so yeah. that will be very easy for you if you to take their courses. And then we're our physical, you know, physical, physical location are very close to each other yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, and for the USB, just that's next door. Yeah, we can see. Yeah. Yeah. we can see we can them. Even, even, I even, walk there all the time. I, I walk there. It's like twenty minutes. Yes, only oh, twenty yeah. minutes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I sometimes have lunch yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes have lunch there. Yes. And for NTNU, they are very good at like. Arts and education and stuff like that. Yes, yes, yes. So if you're interested in that kind of uh, courses, you can take that there. And for the NTUST, they are also good in like uh, engineering and design and, and stuff like that. So if you are interested in that kind of courses that we don't offer here, you can just go next door to them. Yeah. Okay. So I think this is for you guys. Ah. Oh. Like. How long do you uh, think you can? This is, I think, what every like what everyone thinks before they come in to you. At least for me. Uh, okay, who starts first? You can go first. Okay, I can. <laughs> Throwing the ball. Yeah, okay. I have some experience on this one. <laughs> who went to NTU without knowing Chinese? Okay, how long did it take you to become for um, for me? Like I didn't know what strawberry was, but I actually took like some like in my school. I was in a private um, elementary, junior, senior high school, but we took like very easy Chinese classes. So like um, the Chinese classes that I took were equivalent for sixth grade in Singapore, and it's the um, simplified Chinese. So I think it took me one one year, I would say, and then people start asking, like, "Are you from Malaysia?" Because Malaysians, their Chinese are good. So I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. But this actually took me a lot of effort because, for example, 
when you go to the night market, there's a lot of like, you know, menus in Chinese. I made sure to know what each of them means before, you know, talking. And I don't just, you know, I want this, I want this. I, I speak in Chinese. And I think that practice uh, made, it, made it a bit faster, I think. So probably a year, I would say. Yeah. Me? <laughs> I, wouldn't, really? uh, I wouldn't say I'm fluent. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I think I'm still, I'm speaking wise, I think I'm yeah, still kind of okay. Good. Yeah, he's yeah, good. Uh, I would say for me, maybe a year, a year and a half. Two yeah. years, yeah. Like, because I did a year in Chinese in NTNU first, and then mm -hmm. I started NTU. Yeah. But my classes also, like, if, especially if you do classes in um, in Chinese, you're going to improve really fast. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say, yeah, like a year and a half. Yeah. Maybe I give it an extra half just just because. <laughs> <laughs> you can't actually come here to study Chinese first. Yeah, you can, that have, is like, you can yeah. have to study Chinese first. There's actually, there's a Chinese, there's a Chinese program uh, here. Yeah, yeah. There's a Chinese program. And again, NTU offers um, Chinese courses. And like, like, um, like she said, maybe there's like, it, it's based on your discipline also. Like how she did, she put the extra effort and tried to look up the words. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that helps you too. Yeah. But, from the Chinese literature. But oh, they, Lord, they, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not a problem. Yeah, not a problem. We all language better. So you have to come to school. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which else? Say. Well, that answers your question. Is there anything any, you want to answer? Uh, we have student ambassadors here, right? Yeah, yeah. So so perhaps, perhaps you guys can answer this question. Oh. Uh, it's open. It's open. It's, it's open, open to any of the undergrad, grad, PhD. Yeah, PhD. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Yeah. Don't be free. Yeah. That's no problem. No problem. Um, let's see about this one. So, so you talk about, so the question is about our PhD program and, and how much you will get um, of a scholarship. So, uh, our our PhD program usually that would be well in theory that's two to seven years. But usually I think our our depending on your discipline, probably in the more engineering part, that would, you'll you'll be able to graduate about four years. But if you are in the community, that'll be a little bit longer. That would be all oh, oh, depending on your professors and, and the discipline you have. And in terms of the the scholarship, including uh, you said, how much would the actual stipend approximately be? Uh, it will actually be uh, because that, because that is from your professor, so it, it's actually for, it's dependent on your professors. But that's the minimum. So so if you're a PhD student in say in um, history department, uh, the, if, if if you are granted the, the scholarship, so you will be there will be tuition waiver plus at least uh, eight thousand to Taiwan dollars per month. Um, if your professor has more, uh, uh, of course you are you are you will be obligated to do some teaching assistant or research assistant work. Uh, but if you are taking some extra work, probably the professor will have uh, some extra funding for you as well. So it, it really depends. So again, uh, strongly recommend if you whether that's uh, before you apply or after you accepted, got kind a of supervisor, talk to them first and then and then try to figure out uh, what they can offer to you. Um, is there any, any, are there any uh, scholarship for overseas Chinese students later on in the, yes, uh, probably there are, because if you can, uh, there, there, I think there will be about more than 30 kinds of scholarship that are available for overseas Chinese students. I mean, I want one, to visit one, the there, there are a lot, a lot of scholarships. Yes. Do you want to visit the website? Yes. Sure. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I cannot type in Julie. Ah, <laughs> we use pin in, right? Yes, we use yeah. pin in there. Oh, Matthias, do you use to win? Oh, I'm not pulling out the keyboard. Ah, oh. which one do you like better? Which one's faster? You think? Well, two is faster. Oh, really? Okay. This is less keystrokes. Oh, oh, sorry. But so, for me, you can just type the first few letters, like the first letter. Same with oh, okay, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, let me just share the screen for you. Oh, you got this. Ooh. So, I think here is all the stuff that you have here. Yeah. Uh, in a minute, they, we need to wait for the screen to share. Okay, can okay. you scroll that again? Okay, sure. So, these are all the stuff that you will be available for you to apply for after you enter the mm -hmm. as an overseas Chinese student. 
these are all available. And as well as for the, for the overseas Chinese students, all of the, our local students' scholarship stipends, a lot of them are also open to overseas Chinese. So uh, there will be a lot of opportunities that you can get. Very good amount of scholarship uh, that, can, that can cover your yep. mm -hmm. Okay, that's really cool. <laughs> well, that's, that's a lot. Okay. <laughs> okay, what moving else? on. We have a few more minutes, so perhaps we can choose a couple more questions. Yep. Wait, 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 wait. I'm Chinese oh, in school. Hello, also, hello, I'm studying Chinese at MPA here. Yeah. Oh, people keep, keep asking, someone keep asking, DFLL, how many language? Which one? DFLL, how many language? Oh, this one? Oh. Um, oh, yeah, that one. So, Yes, our our department of foreign language literature. So mm -hmm. they do offer many many languages. I'm I'm actually a graduate from DFL. Oh really? Like, oh, wow. like I didn't know that. 15, 16 years ago, that's a long time ago. So um, at the time, I know that uh, we have a second second foreign language as a requirement. So we've got seven. Uh, we can pick one out of seven. So it's French, German, Spanish, Japanese, Japanese, Russian, and Greek and Latin. Oh wow. And, and nowadays, I know they, they even extend further to like uh, our Vietnamese, uh, I think there's Indonesian, Thai, Indonesian, Malay, Malay, Indonesian. Indonesian. Yes, we have, yeah. and, and of course Korean. Yeah. Some of them are offered in, in the Department of Foreign Language Research, and some of them are actually offered in the Department of Japanese. Yeah. I don't know why, but they do offer this kind of four courses as well. Yeah. So if you want to learn languages, I think this is a very good place. Uh, we also have a Chinese language division where you can learn Chinese, of course. And but if you want to learn some other foreign languages, we are there are always courses available. And I think there are some short programs that for them as well. Yep. Yep. Also for undergraduate, the classes are for free. It's actually the electives. I, I took Korean, Japanese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have they have Greek. They have <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they have Greek, they have Hebrew. Really? Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Really? <laughs> Yeah. I personally took that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry, Man Manchuria. Yeah, and Manchuria. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no one even. I mean, very, very few people <laughs> speak Manchuria. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But you can learn. You can also choose to take Taiwanese courses. I took one. It's a a, a a really commonly used dialect here. Yeah. For yeah, it's also for international students only. Oh really? Yeah. 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 It's only for international students. Okay. So this one, uh, if I'm applying for the That's Chinese our last program, question for today. Sure. Uh, do I still have to submit? Um, yes. Well, there are there are some. So so if you're currently uh, enrolling in a program degree program that are, are taught in Chinese and you want to apply for your next degree program in NTU, of course, you, if you can provide a, a, a proof that your program are taught in Chinese, then you are you will be you will not be able. You don't need to apply, uh, provide HSK or uh, test results. Or if you can prove that you are a uh, native Chinese speakers, uh, then we can we can accept that. Unless you have the Ministry of Education scholarship, right? Then that's because another. That is another. Even if you can prove that you speak Chinese and took former courses in Chinese, they still require the test. Yes, that 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 that, that the scholarship requirement. Right. Yeah, but well, people, people should know that because a lot of people have yes, applied. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I, I applied for the uh, MOE. Yeah, they, I, I had to take the Chinese position. Right, right. Yeah. Yes. It was for the scholarship, That's not for the, for the program. Mopa has, Mopa has the, the, the requirement too that you have to take a yes. language. Huh. But, but for the, for the Mopa, Mopa scholarship, that will be one. But for now, I think most of the day, they offer like one plus four scholarship. Meaning yeah. that you got a first year and actually in, in Taiwan studying for Chinese. And then you got four years as a full scholarship for a degree program. Yeah. So usually, yeah. usually at, during the Crazy. first year, you should be able to at least semi fluent to. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 someone just now asked about the I don't think so. someone asked that they're studying at the NTNU right now and they mm -hmm. want to apply, but they don't have their TOEFL. Um, if you don't have your TOEFL, just to answer that question. Sometimes you can just like check with the department, but it depends on the department's leniency to have you. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Yeah. Okay, I guess that's all for today.
Thank you guys for joining us today in our 2021 online info session for international students. Thank you, Andrew, for answering so many of our questions. And thank you all, Wade, you. Matthias, Evelyn, for thank sharing you. your stories. If you have any more questions, you can email us at inadmissions at ntu.edu.tw. And that's all for me today. We have a Mandarin session later this afternoon. I hope we'll see you guys there too. Bye-bye.